Hello everyone. Today we're going to have a look at using our SQLite database to populate a control. We did that earlier with the books grid view, but I briefly went over that and it was not very much detailed around the database side of things. And today I want to look closer at that portion of it. Let's look closer at the database side and try to learn a little bit about how we pull data and put it inside a control. So first one we're going to look at is this combo box. Uh, what I have open in front of me here is a very standard template that you would use to populate data in your program with a SQL query. This will be true for uh, other databases as well. I am a little bit more familiar with SQL Server and this, this setup is identical. So I mean other databases uses the exact same setup where you have a connection string and then you do this connection statement, you open up the connection, you do this command statement, a reader, and then inside of your reader this is where you read the data. And you'll see that the pattern is very recognizable and it's very consistent and it's actually really readable. So first thing I'd like to do is open up the table that I have here. Uh, we'll click edit top 200 rows. Let's push this one off to the side. Let's have these side by side. Right, so the first thing we want to do here is identify those column names. Those column names are critical. What data do we want from here? Well, in this instance, we want everything, except I don't want the password. So we're going to just ignore that one. Uh, I want everything. I want the ID. ID is very important. Name, email, user type. Even though ID may not seem important, that is the magic of databases. So the first thing we want to do is identify how do we read this data. That's going to go into our query here. So our query is how we read the data. SQL is uh, the most common database language. I haven't used any others. Uh, C structured query language. This is how we can read the data. Uh, the way it works, we could do a new query here. Uh, let's, can we put these on the same tab? Not let me put them on the same tab. But select star from users will read all of the data that we saw over here. Let's put these on the same tab at least. Right? We're able to read all this data name, email, password, user type. We want something that excludes the password. Star means collect every column, but we want to exclude the column. So rather, we want to exclude password. So we can't use star, so we'll just use ID. We just name the columns. It's case insensitive. Oh, password's the one we were trying to eliminate. Case insensitive, so it will not, and then I just remove that column. It's that simple. Uh, and then users is the name of the table. So you can see the name of the table over here. So that's all we'll be doing. So this query is all I need. Once you see the data that you want here, you just copy this query and that goes right into this guy. And one thing I would recommend, I, I like to use capital letters here. That's how I denote that I'm working in a database. It makes it nice when you're reading code to be consistent with that way, but that's not required. That's not required. Now we want to bring it into our C sharp program. That's what's going to go on in this while loop. We're going to read this data, that query that we saw earlier, that query we saw earlier, we're going to read it. And I'm actually going to also use this other database program. It's a little bit easier to read the data from it. So I have this right here. 
So I just pasted my query in there. Oops, I want to pull this down and grow my data. There we go. So we we need to be aware of what we're pulling in. Actually, and you can see right here, ID, name, email, user type. So that's the data that we're pulling in. And I want a data structure that's going to hold all of that information. And I have it right here, my user class. So my user class will be how I hold that data. We have ID, name, and email. ID, name, email, user type, is going to be our polymorphism. It's going to be our inherited class, right? We're going to use the user everywhere throughout the program. And then based on the user type, it's going to implement certain rules, right? Is librarian, can borrow book, so on and so forth. So user type will be slightly different in that it's not going to get its own field. It's going to get its entire own class. But most of the time, you're just going to have a field for your data. Uh, this is kind of a unique circumstance. I'm going to use a switch statement to pull in that data. Um, to save a little bit of time, I'd like to just copy the code. Let's copy the code and go over it line by line together. I'm also missing this ID. I just added this ID column. I realized I didn't have ID in the user class earlier. Uh, another very important detail uh, that I commented out so I would remember to go over it is this users variable that we are returning. we are returning a list of users. And that is what goes into the data source, the combo box. The combo box itself, the data source, we can assign it to our SQL query. But in between our SQL query and our data source is our user class, and more specifically, our list of users which makes it really easy when we start using values inside the combo box. We can pull the user class out entirely. I want to go back to my repository class here. So this code is pretty straightforward. Uh, the only part that's a little bit uh, out of the norm, I would say, is the get in 32, get ordinal. I've gone over this in past videos, but I'll just reiterate doing reader.get, uh, it's expecting an integer in here. So if I did zero, it's gonna take the first value, one would take the second value, uh, two, zero, one, two, three, user type would take the third value. Uh, to be a little bit clear and keep the code a little more readable, I did get ordinal, which returns an integer of a matching column name. So you get to see the matching column name. So we're just going to go through, the SQL query is just going to go through line by line right here and assign those values to these temporary variables, ID, name, email, user type. And you can tell based off reading, I'm trying to make the code as readable as possible. You could just read this code here and see what data you're going to get from it. And since, since we did from users and we didn't put anything else into our query, because you can filter you can say, I only want certain type of data. You know, I only want data of people that start with the letter, I don't know, I only see, everyone has a different first letter. A, you get Allen and admin, if you want to do that. Uh, that's not really a common filter, but you could probably do filters where everyone's a regular user, or you could do filters where, yeah, that would probably, one of those would be a more common filter. Um, but here we're looking at just grab every single name on that list. And then we're going to use a switch statement on that user type. Remember, we could just throw all of this into our class, but we don't have a way to handle the user type variable. Our user type variable is defining our, our user. So this is where we 
say whatever value is coming in from this table right here is going to depict the polymorphic user type that we choose. And then uh, we can delete this because I've added it here. And we just add it to the users list. So at the end of all of this, we're just going to have a list of users with this data. Right? Each user, user1 on the list will be this data without the password, user2 on that list. And then once we do all of that, it will go, we'll have a list of users here. So we'll have a list of users. Uh, our user service, so that we don't have to put the repository class and we can still have the polymorphic uh, interface here. Our user class, our user service will call this get all users and then it'll take that data to our combo box in our login form. And then we can pet mess with the login form a little bit if we want, but that's all, that's all it takes. So let's just run the code and see our combo box be populated with all this data here. And there you have it. All that data in that database shows up in your combo box now. So just, just a big highlight going over how all this worked again. We have our SQL database. We run a SQL query. So there's a bunch of ways to learn how to write SQL queries. They're pretty simple, but they take some time to learn when you get to the more complex queries. You write this query. You pull the data into some type of data structure. If you don't want to use a user class, you could probably just put it directly into the control. You don't need to use a user class if you don't want to. It's a little more organized to do so, though. And you'll see later, it's really nice to have a user class. So we'll be using that user class to move data around and create a list of users. And then you just assign that list of users directly to the data source of your combo box. And now your combo box will have a list of users. And then you could modify which value is showing in the combo box, what the actual value is. But I just want to focus on the SQL to combo box portion of this video. So that's all I'm going to cover for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.